Je vais vous donner une question qui est une six, c'est l'air de l'épiphanie, et le last. Le last, parce que le next Sunday, il start une nouvelle liturgical season, called the Septuagesima. It's uh, also called Three Lens. It's a short season, uh, a season that uh, disappeared in the post Vatican II turmoil. So let's take uh, advantage. All the more, since we will be the only one in this parish to, to celebrate the Septuagesima season. Today we have Vespers at 5.30 and we welcome the Pacific College of Wine. On Thursday there will be a votive requiem mass for all the souls departing. It's a, we try to have at least one requiem mass every month for all the souls departing especially those who passed away in recent days. We will remember particularly the father of Canon Hellman, our institute priest in Greenway, who passed away two weeks ago, and also the mother of Canon Lieberfeld, who passed away one month ago. But also all the festival departed. On Friday, the third Friday of the month, the Society of the Sacred Heart meets. We study the spirituality of the Institute after St. Francis itself, so we we'll continue on its biography. We will prepare also the meeting with Carlos Talarico, our Vice Provincial. He will come to visit us on March the 19th, and we will meet in the meeting of the Society of the Sacred Heart, the most policy. All are welcome, even if you cannot join the society. If you are interested in spirituality, you are welcome. Friday evening. In two weeks, the parish will run its annual fundraiser, the Mardi Gras. So please um, consider helping. And you can still buy your tickets and after mass. Profits will go to the parish for uh, some uh, safety and security systems and also for the order of Malta to find the tool at the cleaning of the cathedral by the way. Also available is a CD made by the seminarians of the institute. It's available. The coming of the saints in modern exchange to be a beautiful gift for Valentine's Day. Only 15 pounds. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and dear brethren, in this last Sunday after Epiphany, we meditate on the teaching, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And we talk mostly in parables. <clears throat> I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden from the foundation of the world. He is God. He knows what things are hidden from the foundation of the world. But he will reveal his teaching mostly through parables. First, in order not to offend the Jews, though they do not understand most of them, but to open his teaching to all. A parable is an image taken from daily life that speaks to people according to their culture, it's about comparison. And today we have two, two uh, parables that have about the same meaning. It's about the power 
the fruitfulness of the word of God. The first one, the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which is the least indeed of all seeds, but when it's grown up, is greater than all herbs, and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come, and when the branch is them off. So, what or who is this grain of mustard seed? First of all, it's Christ. In the literal, literal sense, it's Christ himself. He compares himself to the grain of mustard seed. It's the least. Remember how Christ was speaking, less than a thief. And he was bruised, he was, he was killed, he died and was buried. Like a grain of wheat, he was buried in the garden, like in the garden of the sepulchre. But he was, and he was as a mighty tree. And from the resurrection on to the Pentecost, he spread his branches, which are the apostles. Peter is a branch, Paul is a branch. And the apostles who spread the word of God all over the world. The twelve apostles captain the world. We know there is a, some uh, evidence now that St. Thomas went to China. We know his body is in uh, India, we know about that in India, but now we, we think he went to China some found some graffitis on the rock. They went to Europe, Asia, Africa. <laughs> and so the birds, the birds find shelter in the church. The birds it's you, it's the Gentiles, the holy souls that lead in the world and are open to the teaching of the church. It's mostly the, the most lofty souls that leave completely the world and enter in convent or monastery to fight the good fight in the walls of a cloister. This is their shelter. The church was spread all over the world through monasteries and uh, and convent. For what I know, in France, it's a Benedictine monks who made the Christian culture and civilization. And I think we can say the same in England and in many European countries before the Reformation. So, the most of sin, which is Christ, grew and spread to become the universal church, one holy Catholic apostolic church. The second parable has about the same meaning. The kingdom of heaven is like to leather which a woman took and hid in three measures of milk until the whole was left. So the church is the level. We hear too often that if things are bad in the church, it's because of the world. Since the materialism, everything. So that's why we have less vocations. But we need to reverse the, propos the proposition. The church is the leaven. If things are wrong and bad in the world, it's because the church does not bear fruit. Because the church is not faithful to the word of God, 
that sings our walk in the world. Today, we don't need a symbol to say, we don't need to speak about it. But we have too often man made liturgies. What can elevate the souls of people if the liturgies are so poor and deprived of sound, doctrine, and beauty? So, the church is the letter. If we are faithful, if, that's why we need more priests, more consecrated souls in convent and monastery, more consecrated virgins, more missionaries. <coughs> the church has lost its missionary spirit. On account of supposedly religious freedom and interreligious dialogue, what is the missionary spirit today? So, the church is the letter. And we are part of the church. We have to be also, dear brethren, ourselves letter. We must reply what is said about Christ and the church as grain of mustard and leaven to each of us. We have received the seed of Christ. The day we were baptized. What have we done? What have we done? It's like the, it reminds me of what the John Paul II when he visited France. He said, Friends, what have you done of the promises of your baptism? The oldest daughter of the church, and now the mother of revolution. What have you done? So, dear brother, that's my question today. What are the questions that Christ is asking us today? What have you done with the promises of your baptism? With the seed planted in you by the priest the day you were baptized? Is the seed growing and bearing fruit? Are you a missionary? Do people find shelter and relief when they come to you and find the truth? Or are they scandalized? Oh, that's why they get me power. Do we practice works of mercy? Do you show faith, hope, charity? You know, the mustard seed needs to be crushed to release its flavor. It's the same for us. We need our soul to be crushed, to be humbled, sometimes to be persecuted, to show our faith, our hope, our charity, to be able to share the new order of Christ. Dear brethren, are you, are we, the sweet order of do we share this order around us in our family, in our school, in our workplace? Are we the super true, sweet order of Christ? Maybe because we refuse to be crushed, to be bruised. But that's why the world has no taste. In the spiritual life, we authors distinguish among the believers, the beginners, the proficients, and the perfects. I would not dare to call anyone perfect. But however, there are some signs. The beginners are those who just converting, are still struggling to uh, avoid mortal sins. That's the first step, that's the necessary step. That is still a beginner struggling to avoid mortal sins. The proficient struggle to avoid venial sins. But they are 
enlightened by the gospel and find some joy in practicing the virtues. It's called also the illuminative life, as opposed to the purgative life of the beginners. Illuminative life. They enjoy the practice of the virtues. And the perfect, they are in union with Christ. Their life is in union with Christ. Whatever they do, wherever they are, they, are, they think of Christ, of his gospel. And they try to imitate him. That's perfection. So, today that's a place we must ask for. Are we growing? Are we bearing fruits? Are we the leaven? Are we the mustard seeds that produce a big fruit, a big tree? We cannot be sterile. Think of the Virgin Mary. She did not hide what she, her treasure, her, what was planted in her heart, in her womb. Christ, she opened into the world. And she was crushed at the foot of the cross. But now she's the mother of all men. She's our mother. That's a good example. Let us follow the Virgin Mary and all the great missionaries and saints. Let us be the level in the world. A very simple prayer, a student's prayer, that will make us perfect if you receive this grace today. Today's palette says, Grant, we worship thee, Almighty God, that ever fixing our thoughts on reasonable things, we may both in word and in deed do what is pleasing to thee. That's simple. Doing everything to please God out of love. That's how we should educate the children, and as you know, we are always children. So let's be like children who like to please their parents, and we will please God, and we will be good leaven and must have seen into this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.